This is Robert Hargraves. Many of you are familiar with him. I'll let him introduce myself. We have two objectives, as you can see, not only to solve the global warming problem, but to solve the problems of the developing world that desperately needs more energy to approach the lifestyles that we have. The power plant itself, the fission plant, is underground, as you can see. On the left side, we'll talk a little bit about the passive cooling that we have. Uh, that's just in the event that we need to reduce and remove the decay heat on the loss of many other parts of the system. The turbine generators are just standard uh, ultra or supercritical steam turbine generators. They're above ground. They are to be purchased competitively. We need to have access by ship to change the cans every four years. So uh, we are committed to being uh, near an ocean port or up a river. First thing to notice is that world electricity use is going to increase. This chart shows world electricity. Look on the left. That is on the bottom, the number of people in North America horizontally on the vertical axis, the average power consumption, in our case, 1.5 kilowatts. So there shows you the 5 to 8 uh, gigawatts of average power consumed in the United States. Looking across the rest of the world, we see there's a great gap of power just even to re achieve the level of electrification that we have in Europe. Our marketing objective for Thorcon is Southeast Asia, starting in Indonesia. But you can see the great opportunity there in population and a growth opportunity. This is not well known to us, but it's well known to all the economic uh, development experts in the developing world, and that is electricity is crucial to prosperity development. Each dot represents a single country. We are relating here the vertical scale, which is per capita electricity consumption, to per capita GDP, which is closely related to income. They are closely related, about $5 of GDP for just one kilowatt hour of electric power that costs about a nickel. They know that. They want more electricity. We know that in the, some of the areas around Jakarta, there are industrial parks that are empty because of a lack of power availability. However, the developing nations do what they have to do. They can't afford to buy trillions of dollars of solar panels and windmills that only work part-time. Therefore, they choose coal-fired plants. This is not a projection of coal power plant construction. This is a list. It adds up to 1,400 gigawatts of new power plants. Some of those in that list are on hold, and there's competition there from natural gas. So although we've been building about two coal plants a week, the natural gas industry is trying to steal that, and they're going to build approximately one power plant per week worldwide. That is the industry projection for combined cycle gas turbines. The more coal and natural gas that we burn, the more CO2 is put into the atmosphere. Some of it dissolves in the ocean. Lots of it stays right in the atmosphere, increasing the uh, opacity to infrared radiation and increasing the temperature of the Earth. Here on the left is the various emissions pathways. They've stopped calling them useful things like business as usual, but the IPCC and their scientific genius calls it now the RCP 8.5 pathway. Uh, <laughs> Now, also, I discovered that parts per million is hard to understand, so if you multiply by the weight of the atmosphere, we can find out that we're likely to reach that high level of emissions with adding 5,000 gigatons of CO2 to the atmosphere. And the right-hand side shows the various temperature increases above nominal that will occur with these various pathways. But the point is, business as usual, 5,000 gigatons will add four degrees centigrade. That's a lot. An individual power plant emits about eight megatons of CO2 per year. Do the math, look at the coal that you're burning. If we really build 1,400 new coal power plants, we're gonna emit 11 gigatons of CO2 per year into the atmosphere. 
IPCC has something called a gap analysis. Well, if we follow the current committed policy for reducing CO2 emissions, we will emit in the world 59 gigatons per year. That's not even business as usual. This is assuming all the commitments that people made prior to Paris are complied with. If we look at the Paris cuts themselves in the gap analysis conducted by the IPCC, it says Paris will cut out four gigatons per year. So all of you folks who think that uh, we were unwise to leave the Paris Agreement, you may be correct, but the Paris Agreement is basically meaningless compared to the problem that we have. If we look at the Thorcon cuts, if we can literally replace 1,400 gigawatts of coal power plants, that alone will avoid 11 gigatons per year of CO2 that is to be added to the atmosphere according to the list of coal plants under construction and proposed. The two degree cuts, the IPCC says, uh, will in fact require cutting back by 18 gigatons per year. We're way off. Will renewables do it? Well, you heard one talk. Water, wind, and solar 100% by Jacobson won't work. Well, we know it won't work. I mean, Google spent that much money on it, and they concluded in this article in Spectrum, it won't work. People love green, but they're not rational. You've got to help cheaper than coal. We believe the only way to convince the developing nations to adopt a cleaner energy source is with economics. If we can provide them a clean, safe, full-time opportunity for inexpensive power that they can rely on, they will adopt liquid fission instead of coal because they can get more of it for the dollars they have to spend. They're not so afraid of nuclear power as we are. There are 50 under construction in the developing world now and 150 planned. If we can provide them with the liquid fission opportunity, instead, we have an enormous market ahead of us and also available to all of our competitors in this room. In the Thorcon world, uh, there's a can, the red thing in that diagram. Inside that, there's the reactor vessel itself that contains the molten salt and the moderating graphite. There's a molten salt reactor pump above, a heat exchanger that exchanges energy with a secondary salt loop. Near the bottom is a safety drain tank to which, into which we can drain the molten salt in the event we need to sh do a cold shutdown for any reason. Uh, we're working closely with Indonesia. Our idea is to have it floated to Indonesia, settled, and commissioned right there. Here's two Thorcons being serviced by a ship. Thank you.